We are live. He didn't say he's it. Waiting. He's waiting for you to start, Gerald. <laughs> you know, you don't want to say track. it too quickly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Serious face on. This is Literary Roadhouse. One short story once a week. My name's Gerald. I'm Andy. And I'm Anise. And this week we've been reading The Daughters of the Moon by Italo Calvino, translated from the Italian by Martin McLaughlin. And the exciting thing is that I forgot that I was supposed to do a summary to this, so I'm going to have to wing it. I'm going to have to improv my summary. So that's good. Never, I've never <laughs> done that before. Do. Yeah, so about 15 minutes later, I'll, I'll finish. <laughs> anyway, <we're, laughs> we, are, we are talking um, about the moon in this story, Daughters of the Moon, and a, I'm guessing a world in the future that highlights the, um, the stupidity of consumerism and draws a parallel between that and the moon. And what they do is they go and grab the moon when it's sort of falling low in the sky. They go and grab it and put a wire mesh over it and then dump it in the sea, whereupon it rejuvenates. And everybody's different. Wait, they don't there. dump it in the sea. No. Okay, this is why you what? need to write your summary, right, Gerald. Right, Gerald. That was a terrible no. summary. That was a terrible was summary. You need I to disagree write your on summary. several points. On several okay. points. Yeah. No. No, they, they do. They bring it down in a junkyard because they want to leave it in like the junkyard because the moon is getting all old and decrepit and pockmarked. Yes. And then the moon, the daughters of the moon, free it, and they do a procession on Thanksgiving Day through uh, New York City. Uh, not Thanksgiving Day. Consumer Thanksgiving. Day. Consumer, yeah, Consumer Thanksgiving Day because it's which is the future or alternate. I just universe. went through that. That's the day oh, after that's Thanksgiving. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So they yeah. intersect with this alternate universe or futures version of Macy's with or their past. Thanksgiving Day Parade. Or what? Or the past. Or Did the you not past. read the frame narrative, guys? Come on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, all right. There's some yeah. mammoth nonsense at the end that makes this not the past. But anyway. What? Um, what do you think mammoths lived, Anis? Okay. Oh, so you're saying it went back in time? Karina. Okay. We'll, we'll How's the story about... open? What? <laughs> the story opens with Kafwif setting up this frame narrative about the last time the moon got old. This is a story from eons ago. Oh, sure. Okay, but this is doing the version of... Um, this is like eons ago Star Wars version. You know? Like, yeah, eons ago, but not in our timeline, not in our universe. Eons ago in Star Wars universe or whatever this is. No, man. This is what happened a long, long time ago. A long, long time ago, there wasn't a Manhattan with a Macy's Day Parade. No, this no, is no. a modern invention. It was, no, it was a city a lot like our Manhattan that yes, we yes, recognize. Yes. No, I know what you're wow. saying. Yes, within the, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were trying to like, I'm talking about our world, comparing it to our world. Well, within so the narrative it's here. Yeah, it's a long time ago, Star Wars version within this world. <laughs> Uh, within this universe. I just okay. think you are misrepresenting how mammoths drove cars. Okay, right? Okay, we'll get to the mammoths in a minute because I have two theories, but there's one that's way cooler than the other. Okay, so um, uh, the summary, basically the part that, that, that Ange and I are quibbling with, it isn't that the mammoth people or people who later got turned into mammoths um, threw the moon into the river. The moon is... Uh, they're trying to put it in a junkyard because it's trash because they want to replace it with a better moon because they don't like that it's looking old. So then the daughters of the moon free it. They do a procession. Um, and then it's like accumulating junk and crap like that. And then it, all of that dives into the river. And then the moon comes out reborn as like this big, vibrant, emerald green jungle. And the daughters of the moon go live in that jungle with the moon. Okay. I'm this sorry. Oh, I'm Magic. sorry. Yes. And then either human beings become mammoths or they were mammoths all along but refer to them, themselves as humans because earlier the word human is there. So are they uh, like half human, half mammoth? Beings that were barely human. 
Right, beings that were barely human, but like that means that human is still the reference point here. So right. like, well, because they... they were mammoths who built a city a lot like New York, Karina, uh, not Karina, and Ace. Yes. Sorry, Karina. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, when you say, when, when you're saying that they were barely human, the yeah. first time you read that before the mammoth reveal at the end, what you're thinking is he is poo pooing these human beings for being so consumerist, so out of touch with nature, for basically just being you know, consumerist slaves, right? Because he uses that kind of language in that area very heavily. But then there's the mammoth reveal. And you're like, wait, are they barely human? Because they were mammoth human hybrids all along. Like they were bipedal mammoths with tusks and uh, trunks. Oh, uh, or to say they're bipedal. They gotta uh, be bipedal. They gotta be bipedal. No. Just because Why? of how everything else is described. And and then- uh, this Their is the cars are just shaped different. <laughs> So then the, the 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 daughter of the moon, the first Diana you meet with the copper hair, is just a woolly mammoth with copper hair. I mean, I guess. Yeah. But, <laughs> doesn't he talk about her skin at some point? I think I think it might be a mix. I think it might be like no, anthropomorphized man, you're, mammoths, you're, like, you're, like a furry. You're, not, you're in a very a weird place, Annie's, and I They're just don't furry. understand it. She's in a weird place. Human <laughs> bodies, mammoth heads, tusks, trunks. Is that what's happening? Is that no, what was all They're along just a bunch of out? mammoths. They said at the end that they were mammoths the whole time. What if they got turned into mammoths? The whole they didn't world get was turned into mammoths. The, the whole... story would have been talked about that. Why not? So no. here's a fun fact Why about not? this. Here's some interesting points. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is actually part of a series of short stories, all narrated by Kafwifk. Uh, yeah. Kafwifk being a person who is as old as the universe and at various times is a human or the last dinosaur and just real cool. Okay. And apparently reincarnates nose. or remembers all of their reincarnations. Kafwifk. Hmm. Uh, okay. So like, yeah, this is about the time Kafwifk was a mammoth. All right. Okay. Pause again. Hold on, Andy. What do you mean that they couldn't have been humans who got turned into mammoths? Because that whole That's paragraph. That's not what this story is about. It could be. You're wasting a lot of end. time on this. We no, only I'm got not. so much. Listen, we were seized <laughs> by a frenzy. We began to gallop across the continent through the savannas and forests that had recovered the earth, burying cities and roads, obliterating all trace of what had been. All right. There's already magic here of things reverting to nature. What is the number one way to deal with these destructive consumers to humans? Just turn them into an animal. You're mammoths now. You're mammoths now. Nature. Oh, I don't know, man. I think this is about mammoth clock. times. No, I told think us it was a long back. time ago. This was about the, the New York that mammoths built. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's talk about what the story is actually about. But I knew the mammoths would be a sticking point because, like, wow, this comes out of nowhere. Oh. It, yeah. Well, I, 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 no, it, it's it's about renewal and rebirth, isn't it? And and I think because because the 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 world had had just sort of eaten itself up with consumerism, then it reset itself and went back to the time of the mammoths. So I, I disagree with Andy here that that they were perfectly normal humans, well, sort of, and and then. And, and had driven this consumerism and this this destruction of the planet to a point at where it's got to be reborn, starting again with the savannas and the, and so, the mammoths. Here's what I'm thinking. Yeah, go on. Um, that was what I was thinking my first read through on it, my first time. But um, I don't know. The story doesn't actually poo poo the consumerism that much like it's not it's not that kind of story it's it's weird it's weird that these people are throwing things away so quickly and it's sort of judging them for that but it definitely poopoos no, it it describes at, it as a depressing sight right it's the like junkyard the whole, ju no 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 no, yeah. no before you even get to it's the junkyard depressing. um yeah. We went, it was a depressing sight. We went out in the crowds, our arms laden with parcels coming and going from the big department stores that were open day and night. And while we were scanning the neon signs that climbed higher and higher up the skyscraper and notified us, this is way before he even meets Diana. Like this is just yeah, setting up the world. The right? world but itself is depressing. That's playing off of the moon. When it did reappear looking more and more like a comb that had lost its teeth, we averted our eyes with a shudder. Yeah, right? but like the depressing... it's, it's linking them, but like, 
Right, but what's the, what's the what's the act of rejuvenation at the end? Is the <clears throat> the consumer parade melts into the the Diana parade, right? Like they're mm-hmm. they're joined in together. They don't defeat each other. But they sort of do defeat each other. You could argue that the Diana parade yeah, wins. Yeah, you could argue anything. That doesn't mean anything. But it does because <laughs> Ultimately, the consumer society gets destroyed in that last paragraph. It's gone. The cities are destroyed. And the kickoff yeah. point is this. I mean, the weird thing is having the moon be rejuvenated seems to suggest that there was something wrong with its previous form. However, um, the cities lose. Yeah, but not ultimately. What do you mean not ultimately? Oh, well, because, because of we're going to build New a New York there again, again. Yeah, right. Off in the future, but because it's cyclical, right. this this is a cyclical yeah. thing. Yeah. Because it's saying this is not the first time that such a thing has happened. Moon, I remember moons that were even older and more battered than this one. So it's sort of like this process, um, but that reset seems important. And and it's, it, it it seems to be that he's he's equating the the dying of the moon and and the gradual destruction of the moon is is a, equated to the sort of increased commercialization of the planet of the earth and at some point the two sort of coincide so the the destruction of yeah. the moon then then causes the regeneration of the earth but the thing he's really on about is like um right with with all these disposable goods is that people dispose them too quickly right Right, it's like, oh, that toothbrush is barely even worn. Get a new toothbrush. I don't know. Spends a lot of time on toothbrushes. I like it, but like the the moon, as described, is actually decrepit and harmful, and people are afraid it's gonna land on them and stuff. So I don't know that getting rid of the moon was actually a bad move. But then the daughters of the moon. Were seemed like when they all got to the junkyard, seemed like they were going to rejuvenate it. But then, mm. but then the lobster claw thing pulled it down anyway. By the way, I have a tattoo of that. What? It's the steam yeah. shovel with the lobster claw. So that's that's um based on the moon tarot card, the the mm. the crab reaching up to the moon. Oh yeah, I've got I've got him, I've got him here on my what shoulder right wow he's not a steam that's shovel but he could be that's a <laughs> wow um right but so like even that's right relying on tarot imagery and and link to the moon right the the steam shovel that looks like a crab claw it's like it's bad and different and it's not the thing diana was doing but it's also still part of like some real fundamental imagery i don't know <laughs> It seems what does like that tarot that would, card mean? What is what is what? Well, the, I don't. What, I'm not. I'm not versed in the tarot's. I rely on other people for that. Well, I figured if you got a tattoo related to it, that you might be attached you to that. Yeah, one. because I just outsource that, right? Okay, uh, I'm looking it up right now. This moon tarot card meanings: um, the crab or, or crayfish. Let me get down to the crab section. The story of this card begins with a lobster or a crayfish or a crab and other definitions, which represents us and our greatness or higher purpose or calling emerging from our primordial ignorance. Um, this is not derogatory. It's uh, we're simply unknowing our divine potential to start a journey of higher purpose. We are met with all manner of influences. The symbolic crab also links to the astrological aspects of cancer with the moon as its ruling celestial influence. So it's about human potential, divinity, and... Um, Right. And so that's what pulls down the moon is human potential and, and striving for knowledge. So that's not bad. Yeah, but they're not pulling down the moon because they love it. They're pulling down the moon because they hate it. It's a bit of yeah, a stretch. But the moon's if anything, actually old though, right? Like not well, the like they're toothbrushes. Actually, the moon's actually old and worn out. I get what you're saying. We're like this one disposal might be one of the disposals that actually makes sense that it makes sense to bring the thing down and it is pretty amazing that you can bring down the moon with a crane that is a divine magical thing that is being accomplished by these mammoth people by pedal mammoths um but uh 
<laughs> or humans who later were transformed into mammoths. Yes. <laughs> All of the stories are about highly anthropomorphized non-human entities. Narrated by Kafwifk. Really? Wow. Yeah. Oh, so they are bipedal mammoths? No, not bipedal. Just mammoths who build houses and cars. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I just feel like if you were a mammoth, wouldn't you build like 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 a scooter? A motorized scooter, you know what I mean? Just like a maybe bike. that's what they call a car, Annie. Maybe, know. but like oh. I just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, be more specific. Oh, it's still got a hood. <laughs> anyway, um, but that means that these naked women that we're seeing are mammoths, completely. Yeah, I'm all right with that. Yeah, I'm all right with that too. It's kind of funny. It's funny. Yes. The, the only thing he describes is her copper hair, right? Because if that's the case, it, it gets funnier. But, right. But then, but then. Ordinarily, she would be wearing clothes because they right, were yeah, she threw all her clothes. No, in no, 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 no. So, she, no, no, so no. she's, a, so she's a, 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 a copper. Well, the other mammoths, mammoths are clearly wearing clothes. clothes, Gerald. That's all. What? The other the mammoths other are obviously are wearing, wearing clothes. clothes. Right. She took off all her clothes in Central yes. Park. Yeah. So. Um, okay. Whatever. Yeah. This is just <laughs> funny. Don't worry about it. I was wearing clothes, right? She had long copper hair that came down over her shoulders. Suggests the way that we do hair. Oh, sure. Know? Yeah, it suggests that. Yeah. <laughs> to give you that twist at the end. Are you being or, the or the anthropomorphized <laughs> mammoths, bipedal mammoths? Or they were always humans and then got turned into mammoths, and the cyclical nature here is, uh, I guess, I humans are also cyclical? I don't know, man. I like it a lot. Like I like it better if they're just mammoths. Yes. <laughs> mammoths all along. <laughs> just a world The other thing I mammoths. really liked, just specifically, uh, I'm going to share something with you, with you all and all of our podcast friends. Eric, sorry. I am very afraid of werewolves in mm -hmm. my daily life. Mm -hmm. Because if you were afraid of, say, a burglar, you could lock your doors or establish a home security system. But if you're afraid of a werewolf, you can't do anything because werewolves aren't real. So if a werewolf exists already, all the rules are out the window because that's not a real thing that happens. So if you're you, fighting a werewolf, you can't count you on it, right? It, it's, it stands for the dissolution of reality. And what tickled me directly is at the beginning of this story where they're like, oh man, the moon was super weird. There was like this stuff and like werewolves kept howling. Yeah, just casually. There's, right. But there was always a sleepwalker reading, or a werewolf starting to howl or a pyromaniac. And there's, so it's just like, yeah. oh, casual werewolves about the dissolution of reality. So that just includes you reel in. In your reading of this, it's not humans that under a full moon turn to a wolf. It's mammoths that under a full yes, moon yeah, turn to I, a wolf. Yes, yeah, I maintain yeah. that. Well, also, yeah. it's that reality is dissolving because things aren't right. Right, right. Yeah. So. That mammoths ride yeah. motorcycles. Yeah. Or scooters. Or I, we didn't do, we, we launched right into this. We didn't even do our general overall impressions because even with all this discussion and as much fun as I'm having discussing it, I don't know. I don't know if I necessarily love the story as much as Andy. Andy definitely liked it a lot more than I did. I liked it. I don't regret reading it, but there was something about it because to me, he does seem very much like coming down on consumerism um, in a way that, you know, feels satisfying, but not new. I understand this was written a while ago. 1968 um, and not just yeah, a while ago. A long time ago. Well, yeah, that's a, a lot. That's why I think um, yeah. the anti consumerism stuff is maybe we're, we're taking too modern a, a look at it. Really? But he does describe them as I'm trying to find the exact language. He does describe them. Um, I think it's in the barely human section. He's, he is very critical of what people are focused on. Yeah. Well, yeah, that I think is accurate. But I don't know, like we, we also, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, Gerald. I'm limited in my, in my youth, <clears throat> but I don't know. That was in the, it was in the grips of uh, the space race, right? Like mm -hmm. we didn't really as a society know the fallout of all the wasteful disposable plastics and everything. Right. 
Yeah, so I, everybody does. Yeah. So I think he's he's decrying something else, right? I actually I don't know because because in that time we we were aware uh, in in certainly in the UK we were aware of products coming in from particularly Hong Kong. So so the 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 term made in Hong Kong was um was a was a pejorative term it was it was something that was cheap and nasty and and um and the you know motorcycles that were coming in from from japan were were jap crap they they were they weren't proper things they were sort of cheap and nasty and and but but actually at that time people were starting to to understand that these things were actually pretty good and worth owning and 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 I'm, I know around that time we were there was talk about planned obsolescence of, of products, mm -hmm. so that even then you know you had you had people with washing machines that were like twenty thirty years old, and yet one bought three years ago was already worn out. So it's it I think it was just starting then. Maybe maybe it was a a, a warning by Italo. And 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 isn't this the time when? Um... Uh, John Cheever is writing a lot about what he's seeing in suburbia and modern life and the rat race and just sort of working and industry and things like that. Like these, I think these ideas were already um, prominent in like elite writing circles. And this was already being discussed. And that's how Calvino's, you know, uh, a, a big writer of that era. So yeah, like, really privy to these. He, I mean, that's what I'm saying is, his his sort of progressive thinking should be a few years ahead of everybody else of the common person. You would expect that, yeah, yeah. I, I think he is being for sure. Yeah, I was just I was just wondering when um, the World's Fair was in was it in the twenties or something. There was a, a the World's mm -hmm. Fair where where um, Edward Edward Bernays first sort of started introducing the the idea of marketing things by by selling the dream selling the the idea of things rather than the product itself and so they they had you know all all sorts of electrical things in maybe it was in the 50s and this um, is the, there was more than one but i think of the 1939 one i think that's the famous one because wasn't there more yeah. than one or 64 maybe in, in new york there were maybe yeah. maybe there, there was there was one there was one mm -hmm. way where he the problem with the rat is still rat. <laughs> Very good. Well done, Mark. Um, yeah, th there's um, yeah, there's this one way where he 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 sort of built the he he built and designed the modern kitchen with with electrical devices and electrical appliances, and and this was the dream and and all, all of having these products which made your life easier, and so I I think I think it's valid. I think that there was definitely a. a a view of consumerism at the time, um, 68. Yeah, they, apparently they're still going. I didn't know this. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, but 39 is the big shift. I'm just on the Wikipedia page now for World Fairs. So like mm. the first, they're, they're like sort of three eras, the 39, the 1939 to 41 is the one that was in New York. I'm sure the names come to New York more than once. It's the first took a different approach. It was less focused on technology and aimed more at cultural themes and social progress. It's built, that's the one that's all about building the world of tomorrow. Um, then it came back to New York in 64. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was 39 when Edward Bernays, Edward Bernays was the organizer which he used to manipulate the masses into believing that a true democracy can only flourish in a capitalist society. So that was 1939. And, and so I think that's, that's when all that started. This is like on the heels of the Great Depression. Like this is... Yeah. <laughs> could you, dude, yeah, this is a lot. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it, it's, it's kind of... I, I'm fascinated by Edward Bernays. It, it, it's... It, it's you know, and his work with the Nazi Party, and 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 because uh, his uncle was um, uh, oh god, who was his? Anyway, that guy. <laughs> who was his name? Oh, come on, Gerald. I don't know. I have so to look old. into it. I'm so old. Edward Bernays is the nephew maybe, maybe. of. Maybe he has a famous. notable uh, uncle in here. 
Oh, Sigmund it does. Freud. It's Sigmund Freud. Sigmund there Freud. Go. Yeah. There he is. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, right. yeah, so that, there we are. So, so I think, yes, going back to the, the, the original thing, um, yeah, consumerism and um, was rife in, in the 60s. Yeah. And I think people did understand, especially progressives, the elite mm. sort of artistic class for sure. And I think, uh, I, I think it's definitely, I, I think what Andy's picking up on, especially as I reread it, I think he does very clearly make his stance on consumerism known, but the entire piece is so light in tone. Um, he's not coming down fire and brimstone. He's writing from the, you know, it's a little detached, so it doesn't feel like it. I think right. the subtext is clearly there, but the mm. but the narrator isn't coming in like, ah, these horrible people, because the narrator is keeping it very light throughout. But despite that lightness, you can read between the lines on um, sort of like the author's perspective. Um, yeah. But yeah, but the narrator is is sort of just explaining this is a thing that is. He's just talking about these mammoth people. Yes. Maybe. Or people who are supposed to be mammoths. Or mammoths. Or, or people who got turned back into mammoths. And yeah, like I wonder like I wonder yeah. if human beings are cyclical in this reading of history. It makes me think of that um, recent um, Werner Herzog quote. He's the director. He's really out there. He's you know one of those sort of modern day kind of esoteric geniuses. And um, he was doing an interview, and they were talking to him about uh, Elon Musk's um, plans to go colonize Mars. And he says that just the very idea of it is an obscenity because um, humans should not be like locusts going from habitat to habitat and destroying it. I loved his answer. It was really cool. He was just like, he's like, he has no problem with going to Mars, like mm. exploration, checking it out. Like that part's fine. But the idea of colonizing it and like moving the human race because we've disposed of this planet and went to another one, like, that is an obscenity. We are not locusts. So I'm like, yeah. Well, at least there's no indigenous population to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. know of. What if they live underground? Yay. <laughs> Yeah, the subterranean yeah. people of Mars. Who knows? Well, they they can they can sort of put fences around them and call them reservations or something. And <laughs> sorry, no, that, was a, that, fine, was, that was a little jai, but uh, uh, oh, the, my people. Yes. Well, yeah, you guys are much better. I don't know if you know about right. Your I was gonna say. Yeah. No, it wasn't, it wasn't you don't have a clean did. record. Right. No, for... I'm not saying we are. It's it's us that did it. So it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> you, not you. Oh, we, we did it too. We carried on the tradition, you know. Yeah. Learn. We learned from we, that. We showed you the way, and you said, oh, "That sounds like fun." <laughs> yeah, we're like that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Makes All a right. lot of fence. Uh, <laughs> See what Very I did there. good. Is there oh, yeah, anything else? Me. We're like at twenty-eight minutes, so I'm just wondering if there's anything else we want to say about this story. There's a lot to say, but just that it's real cool, isn't it? It is cool. Isn't it real cool? Aren't all the phrases so good? Isn't the imagery beautiful? Yeah. Isn't it neat? It is. It is. I, I, I must admit, when I, when I first first looked at it, I thought, "What on earth is this about?" I just, be, but you have to you have to sort of take off your sensible head and put your sort of a wide open head on, and and then it becomes really really good. Really enjoyed this. It's really exemplary for this sort of like genre. I don't even know exactly what this genre is. I love people would say it's like fantasy, sci-fi, well, fantasy. It's yeah, but it's not like, really. Not really. It's like sci-fi, fantasy, magical realism stuff. stuff. I don't know about magical realism. Where's the realism? Well, <laughs> no, <laughs> just magical. <laughs> I guess like just um, Calvino in general, right? I did a lot of a, a lot of a lot of Calvino ing afterwards really what i did is I, I was telling karina about the story and she's like huh that because i just gave her a gloss and she's like that either sounds like it's the mature work of someone very cool or like the completely juvenile work of someone and, and i was like oh it was by italo calvino she's like calvino so i was like okay i've got to oh wow no 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 he is he is he's i gotta cool. find out some more um yeah. okay Man, what a cool guy! Also, by the way, yeah, yeah. what about him? What'd you learn about? Well, him? Well, okay, I don't know. Um, he was born in Cuba to two botanist parents, uh, and his parents named him Italo to remind him he was always from Italy. 
and then they moved back to Italy when he was two, and so he always thought the name showed a belligerent nationalism. <laughs> <laughs> belligerent uh, nationalism, fantastic. Right, and then like fascism happened, and <sighs> so like he spent six months in the Italian resistance as a guerrilla fighter while the Nazi party kidnapped his parents and pretended to execute his father in order to torture his mother for wow yeah and then right because they were all a bunch of like free thinking anarcho socialists uh phds and yeah. his brother is a geologist and and then he grew up on this uh floricultural uh reserve where they you know did plant experiments and stuff wow and and he was the one who went out of the hard sciences and started writing and just cool like a bunch of cool pacifist geniuses who then opposed fascism and nazism and then became a writer neat just neat awesome. cool things cool life yeah very cool yeah yeah and 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 he does this style so well like which are, it's so descriptive it's so vivid it just sort of takes you along it's very beautiful i mean even the way he describes the junkyard is beautiful um and, and very evocative uh but i have to say on my first read through i liked it i did but i wasn't like blown away by it it sort of like sticks with you when you have to think about it a little bit mm. it, yeah yeah i yeah. well because i had to I was like, man, I like this story and I liked all these good bits in it and I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it. And yeah. also it was real weird. <clears throat> um, then I had to put it in a, in a conceptual box with uh, Rushdie and Garcia Marquez. And then I was like, okay, I know, I know what to do with those. Yeah. Yes. 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 Like them and think about them and they're cool and, and don't sweat that the people ended up being mammoths. Yes. Aha! Aha! Aha. So you admit Aha. it. Aha! Aha. <laughs> gotcha. That's right. People that turned into mammoths. I ended up being mammoths, is what I said. <laughs> turned out to be mammoths all along. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Right. Man. Okay. Okay. Uh, anything else we want to add? Because I think, yeah. I think this is a story where, like, really the biggest thing I can say to the podcast is read it. Like, it doesn't make sense unless you read it. You like, you should read all the stories we discussed on the show. But I feel like that's especially especially true this so. one. <laughs> yeah, especially this one. If not, you're going to be really lost. Um, right? Yeah, because um, yeah. Gerald, and especially the fact that you forgot you were doing the summary. Um, but th this is not an easy story to summarize. Now, is it? No. It's because what? No. What's the high gloss? It's like someone telling a story about this moon that got pulled down and turned into a jungle, I guess. Like it was yeah, like I, I, I was I was thinking of doing that and I thought, no, that's that's too silly. Let's let's make it like at least a good stab at it. And then and then I made a complete pig series yeah. of it anyway. So there Ooh. you go. A lot of toothbrush references though, huh? What's that about? Yeah. New toothbrushes. Yeah. Nylon's new, I guess, though, right? In sixty eight. No, I, I, and I like that it, it had entered the phase when cars wear out more quickly than the soles of shoes. See, that's yeah. a great, that's a great <laughs> line. And you think, guys, yeah. yeah, and the skyscraper is gleaming like the neon bristles of a brand new toothbrush. Right. Yeah. A lot of good toothbrush references. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In a story that's about um, bipedal anthropomorphic mammoths. Well, maybe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Quadrupedal. <laughs> <laughs> so are we ready to rate yeah yeah i'm gonna give it a six, six. yeah well, that's, there that's, we go that's a shocker. it's got lobsters it's got werewolves it's got mammoths that's everything <laughs> i guess it's a crab it's not a lobster so maybe five and a half now i'll give it a six all right uh, I'm giving it a six too. Wow! I like. You I like the, you. <laughs> no, no, because I like the message, even though I may have got the message wrong. I, I like the message. I, I love the fact that it generated so much discussion, um, and and it, it's really well written. Some beautiful phrases, and 
and I like those. My favorite ever book of all time is 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 one that's sort of a destruction of the planet. It's a um, um, sort of global nuclear war sort of thing. But then there's a rebirth at the end, and the two people hand in hand walk over the hill, and there's a bright light and that sort of stuff. So I I, I love that sort of rebirth type narrative. So uh, yeah, six, no question about it. Wow. Okay. Uh, I think we're going to a five. I liked it. Yeah. I think it's good, but I'm not shouting from the rooftops the way you guys are about it, or especially Andy. Um, but it's really, really good, really solid. Five's just can't fault it. Just personally. really solid. That's yeah. that's a that's a swinging attack. <laughs> <laughs> really <it's> adequate. <laughs> I'm sorry. Adequate exceptionally adequate. Yes. Yeah. No, exceptionally talented, masterful exemplary of its genre especially you, you don't need to justify it it's okay apparently i do I'm under yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good fun all right andy what are we reading yeah. next week so next week we're reading every tiny tooth and claw or letters from the first month of the new directorate by marissa lingan okay but before you go, describe your favorite type of moon in our Facebook group, The Literary Roadhouse Readers. Is it made of sapphires? Does it have an atmosphere of cotton candy? There can be all kinds of moons, according to the story. Do you want to read more stories about the ills of consumerism? You can support us by leaving a review on iTunes and contributing to our podcast and moon rejuvenation expenses at patreon.com slash literary roadhouse. Every bit helps. And as always, share this podcast with the anthropomorphic bipedal mammoth in your life, because that's what happened in the story and changed my mind. Until next time, <laughs> read a good story. <laughs>